And that is the scene at the Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California this morning. So much love pouring out for Nancy Reagan. We remember her this morning. She's remembered for her style, for her grace, for her elegance, and of course, for her devotion to her husband, both inside and outside of the White House. And we're going to go to Lindsay Davis for more on that. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Whether as a protector of her husband, an advocate for Alzheimer's research, or an icon in the fashion world, Nancy Reagan was a force. She once described the strength of a woman and in doing so, shed some light on her own disposition, saying, a woman is like a tea bag. You cannot tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. Nancy Reagan is said to have redefined the role of first lady. Her glamour rivaled only by her advocacy. What will you do when someone offers you drugs? Yes, no! As she gave voice to millions of Americans. In 1987, she brought breast cancer to the forefront after she was diagnosed with the disease and defended her decision to have a mastectomy. I couldn't possibly lead the kind of life I lead and keep the schedule that I do having radiation or chemotherapy, there'd be no way. Maybe if I'd been 20 years old, hadn't been married, hadn't had children, uh, I would feel completely differently. But uh, I, for me, it was right. Following President Reagan's 1994 diagnosis with Alzheimer's disease, Nancy went on to take a very public stand in support of stem cell research. She talked to ABC's Diane Sawyer in 2005 about then-President George W. Bush's opposition to it. You could save millions of people's lives if you really charged ahead with stem cell. Hopefully we will. Still hoping to persuade him? Well, you can always hope. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, as I say, I, he, he firmly believes that his position is the right position, and that's fine. That's, that's his belief. In 2009, Nancy met with President Obama at the White House as he signed the Reagan bill. There are few who are not moved by the love that Ms. Reagan felt for her husband, and fewer still who are not inspired by how this love led her to take up the twin causes of stem cell research and Alzheimer's research. She took care of every need of her husband. Roger Sandler, a personal photographer to the Reagans, got to know Nancy Reagan like few ever did. Whether it was personal or official, if you wanted to get a policy question to him and you couldn't get to him directly, people would call Mrs. Reagan. She was not only a gatekeeper for the president, but a style icon for the ages, dazzling with red carpet regality in the 1940s and 50s, and capital charisma in the 1980s. Our love is here to stay. Red was her signature color, later dubbed Reagan Red. She once told W Magazine, I always liked red, it's a picker-upper. And yet the former first lady still managed to make a statement in jeans on the ranch with President Reagan. Championing American designers, Nancy even won a CFDA Lifetime Achievement Award in 1988. Oscar de la Renta once told People Magazine that Nancy never made a single faux pas. The editor of Glamour has said you can track the idea of red as a power color back to Nancy Reagan. Some even say she was influential in making red the Republican color. And while she had downplayed the role of First Lady, a close friend of the Reagans once said without Nancy, there would have been no Governor Reagan, no President Reagan. She became a political figure in her own right and certainly did it with style. George Amy. She certainly did. No question about that. We're joined now by two people who knew Nancy Reagan well. Sheila Tate, who is Mrs. Reagan's press secretary when she was First Lady. She joins us from Virginia. And here in New York, Vanity Fair special correspondent Bob Colicello, who has written extensively about the Reagans. Good morning to both of you. And Bob, let's begin with you, because Nancy Reagan had said in the past that she never really considered her place in history. It was all about Ronnie's place in history. But what would you say her legacy is? Well, I think her legacy and his legacy are one and the same, really. I mean, she it was very funny because she, she especially as the years went by, she wanted to be recognized for how much she had done and on the serious, substantive uh, side of things. But she never wanted to outshine her husband. So it was a delicate balance in, in you know, how she wanted to be written about. Uh, but she, they were just uh, joined at the hip. I mean, she was his, not only the gatekeeper, but his advisor, his soulmate, his listening post, his 
public relations advice. And as know, caretaker at the end. And caretaker all the way through, really. And Sheila, you know, Nancy Reagan didn't like to talk about her influence on the policy of President Reagan, but she really was a force behind the scenes at the White House. Well, <clears throat> I think any, um, any wife of a president, if they have a very close relationship, inevitably assumes some of that role just because he trusts her. And, and he knows that, that anything that, that she's talking to him about is, has to do with his own best interest. And that's what I always saw. She, she, really, she never initiated any policy, um, and she wasn't particularly interested in it. Um, but she did have, um, people knew how much influence she had on the president, and so they would come to her and make their case, hoping that she would um, tell the president about it. Right. And Bob, you once asked her about her influence on the policymaking. Yeah, I told her, you know, people say you had a lot of influence over personnel, of putting the right people around your husband and getting rid of the ones who turned out not to be right. But I said, what about policy? Was there any area you took a particular interest in? And she said, oh, no, you know, Ronnie had his ideas, his beliefs, he was hard to change. And then almost in a whisper, she added, well, maybe the whole Russian thing. Yeah, that small Russian thing. <laughs> the first arms Which control agreement. Which was the major initiative of the whole Ronald Reagan political career. Opening with and, Gorbachev. Yeah. And, well, I mean, anti-communism, the evil empire, and then opening with Gorbachev, which she, working hand in glove with James Baker, chief of staff, and George Shultz, secretary of state, really promoted uh, and worked around some of the hardliners in the administration. Mm -hmm. I think she had, uh, she wanted her husband to be seen as a peacemaker, not a warmonger. And Sheila, as we talk about the influence of Nancy Reagan, we have to talk about uh, one of the greatest impacts. People talk about how she brought glamour back to the White House, but back in the day, she was criticized for that as well. How did she handle her critics? Um, well, I think, you know, she knew, she knew she was in for it. For example, when she um, ordered the new, as Ronald Reagan called it, the new dishes for the White House, um, <laughs> She knew she was going to take some heat for it. She, you know, so they, I mean, they, they went out and they got a, a, um, um, a found, private foundation to donate the money. When she redecorated the White House, she got contributions from individuals. Uh, but even that created um, some controversy. And um, she, she knew she wanted to do it and she was willing to take the heat for it. I think that's probably the the best way to describe it. Which led to that famous secondhand rose moment. Tell us about that. Oh man, that was great. Um, well, that, that came in the second year. Helen Thomas came to see me and she said, you know, we're gonna do a piece about Nancy Reagan and we're wondering if, if you'd consider um, having her make a little cameo appearance of some kind. And I said, well, we'll think about that. So they sent me the lyrics of the song they were going to do. And I, um, I, I talked to, uh, what I did, I did the reverse of her. I went to Mike Deaver and Jim Baker and all the people I knew, Dave Gergen at the time, who would be influential. And I said, would you support this? And they said, absolutely. So then I got Landon Parvin, who was a wonderful speechwriter, and he and I sat down and worked out the lyrics to this song and took it to her. And she said, I'll not only do this, I'll dress up, I'll dance. And she put this whole routine together, kept it a secret from the president. And it was the most amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing night I've ever spent in Washington because you could actually feel attitudes toward her change yeah, no in that question room about that it. night. She killed it that night. <laughs> Sheila Tate, thank you for joining us. Bob Kilichello, thank you very much as well.